You know Electrolux product? You know the commercial before? You know the commercial before? I gonna knock out your door, ring out your bells, and tap on your window screen. Uh, I will not going uh, to do that, but <clears throat> I have to make this work. <laughs> but for sure, but for sure, what I have said, I'm not an uh, agent of that knocking at your door. But for sure, but for sure, knocking on your door will be done today through the message. Amen. Which will be going to the believer because the title of our message today is entitled, Are the Doors of Your Heart Open for the Lord? Again, the title of the message for today is, are the doors of your heart open for the Lord? Let us open our Bible in the book of uh, Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. I will talking about the doors of your heart today. Revelation, chapter 3, verse 20. What is mentioned there? Behold, I stand at the door, and now, who is speaking uh, to this word? The Lord Jesus Christ. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man hear my voice and open the door, I will come into him and will sup with him and be with me. Shall we bow our head and let us pray? Our God in heaven, thank you once again, once again Lord, for this opportunity to study thy word and to listen to your word. Guide us, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Two of the saddest accounts in the Bible is read in John chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. Can we read that one as an introduction? Two of the saddest accounts in the Bible. John chapter 1, verse 10 and 11. I will read this verse. He was in the Word, and the Word was made by Him, and the Word knew Him not. Again, He was in the Word, and the Word was, with, was made by Him, and the Word knew Him not. Who is the subject of this? Jesus. The Lord Jesus Christ. 11. He came unto His own, and his own received him not. What a sad, what a sad statement. And one more, one more uh, sad statement. Luke chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Luke chap chapter 2, verse 1 to 7. Uh, and verse 7 only. Uh, if you read the accounts of this, this one, the, uh, 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 when uh, Mer uh, Mary and uh, Joseph, Joseph and Mary, uh, about to deliver the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, that is the story. Verse seven. Uh, this thing. And she bore, and she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in a swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger. What is the next statement? Because there was no room for them in the inn. You notice the word there? You notice the word no room for them in the end. And then in the first John chapter, uh, John chapter uh, 1, verse 10 and 11, he came into his own, and his own received him not. Imagine, uh, as we read this verse, it pictures that the Lord who owns everything is not welcome or rejected or no place in his own property. Okay, let this one. Imagine yourself in this scenario. You put in yourself in this scenario. Putting yourself as the owner of the house, and you came back uh, owner of the house, and you went to other place for a while, and you and you ask some people to stay in your house. Uh, you plan to go into other place and you ask somebody to stay in the house. Then, 
uh, you stay there temporarily. But when you come back, you are no longer welcome or rejected or no place in your house. And these people already lock, already lock the, all the doors for you that you cannot even enter whatever your room you want to. Diba? Very sad scenario, correct? Very sad scenario. As what the, the pastor said, uh, as our pastor said uh, early morning uh, during the Friday school, he told he came back from Philippines, correct? And he is still the pastor. How about it is uh, our pastor now uh, somebody make a coding uh, code that? <laughs> and <laughs> rather, Conrad uh, is now is the acting pastor. Of this so what is this, what, what, what our pastor feel? This is one uh, uh, we are making as a picture or so that uh, we can uh, relate on the uh, on this message on this message. Okay, that that is the scenario. What would you feel and what would be your reaction? Same thing to us in relation with the Lord. Sometimes it happens that we are doing the same with our Lord. We are, uh, we are making uh, some doors of our heart close to Him. That, that close to Him. He wants to in there, but we are closing that door to Him. <clears throat> some room in our heart is closed for Him, and the sad thing is that even He is knocking on the door of, heart, of our heart, we are not opening. And the worst thing is that we already lock. We already lock the door or harden our heart. Today, as we read in Psalms 95 verse 8, can we read that one? And Hebrews 7 and 8, this is the same. As an introduction. Psalms 95 verse 8. Psalms 95 verse 8. Harden not your heart is in the day of as in the day provocation. In us in the day of temptation in the wilderness. I'm talking about harden not your heart today. Because it is mentioned also this verse, same verse in Hebrews chapter chapter 7, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 8. Hebrews 7 and 8. Sorry, uh, okay. But this uh, in Hebrews there is a thing. Today, if you hear your, uh, if you hear that God's word, harden not your heart. That is mentioned there. Uh, you will check in that one. We will study and we will check and uh, evaluate. I, 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 I want to make three rooms only. Three rooms in your heart that the Lord wants to open for Him. We will study three rooms in our heart that the Lord wants Him to open for you. Uh, for engineers and architects, and even all of us, is there any a room without door? Can we call a room if it is no door? No. No. So meaning, so meaning, what I'm trying to point out there here is that in every room. There is a door. And think of this, of this, that in your heart, there are rooms that the Lord wants you to open for Him, but the question is, are the door of your heart open for the Lord today? Again, imagine or make a picture, a picture in your mind that your heart has three rooms that the Lord wants to enter. Or imagine that your heart is like a house that has a three rooms in that the Lord wants to enter as we read in Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Why the Lord is longing and wants to enter in the room of your hearts? The answer is because without God, we can do nothing. Amen. Without God, we can do nothing. That is mentioned in John chapter 15 verse 5. So, we will study three rooms in our lives. 
quickly, number one. The role for salvation. The role for salvation. Meaning the mentor of our heart. The mentor. If you are here today and first time you hear this word or you heard this already or you are here you heard this message of salvation many times but still you are not opening the mentor of your heart to accept or receive the Lord Jesus Christ by faith as your Savior this message is for you remember the message of the gospel is still the same it is not changing Amen. this message is for you maybe your question is why we need salvation the answer is that because he is real the lake of fire is real Amen. we can read that in Revelation chapter 20 verse 13 and 15 to 15 and Revelation 21 8 the hell is real and this will be cast into the lake of fire who is going to the lake of fire by the way of course it is mentioned in revelation chapter 20 verse 10 satan beast in the first prophets in the holy angels and who else the people who are sinners people or men are going to hell, hell to the lake of fire because of what sin The, the, uh, what I'm trying to, to point out here is that for the visitors who are here or even you are here that you heard this already but still you are not opening your heart to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior this message is for you because it is mentioned in, in Romans in Romans chapter 3 verse 10 or Romans 3.23 in Romans 3.23 what is mentioned there for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. For all have sinned. And what is the impact of sin in our life? Or what is the payment? In Romans chapter 6 verse 23, it's mentioned there what? For the wages of sin is death. And if you examine that death, you go to Revelation 21.8. Can we read that one so that we can read in the Bible? The truth is that all men are sinners and bound to hell. Revelation, uh, Revelation 21, 8. But the fearful and unbelieving and the horrible and murderers, idolaters, and one more verse, and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars, all people are lying, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. And if you read also Revelation 20, verse 13 to 15, you can see also there the second death. Now, <clears throat> uh, as, as what I said, we can do nothing without God, correct? Amen. And we cannot save ourselves. Right. But God loves us. God loves us. God but the good news is that God loves us. In John chapter 3 verse 10, 6, uh, 3 16, we heard always this one. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believeth on him should not perish. What is that meaning? Perish. Perish in hell. But have everlasting life. Amen. But have. Romans 5 8 also. But God commended His love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He gave the gift of salvation in Romans chapter 6, 6 23. The, the last part. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. What is mentioned there? For by grace are you saved through faith, in that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, and not of works, lest anyone should boast. Amen. But how can we get this gift of salvation? 
How can we get the gift? Mamaya mayroong uh, mga uh, uh, may dedication. Siyempre, mga ninong ninang magbibigay ng gift. Uh, so, wala ko yata. <laughs> magbibigay ng how, how uh, the gift will be received. Through, uh, to, to get this receipt, through receiving. The same thing. The gift of sal uh, gift, uh, the salvation is gift from God. And how you will get this gift? To what? To receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Amen. That is the very simple thing about salvation. And don't make it uh, uh, simple lang. Simple, simple. Complicated. Complicated. Thank you. <laughs> this one, the message for this uh, first point is for our visitors who didn't receive yet the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. This is the room for salvation. Because the other two points, two and three points, you cannot get this one, you cannot uh, make this one unless you open the door first for salvation. Amen. You have to open the door for the Lord Jesus Christ to come into your heart as your Savior. Amen. This is the window. Now, the second point. The second point. Now, if you already open the door of salvation for the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to step up and open other doors which are which are inside the main door. Uh, you can read that one in the Hebrews chapter 6 verse 1. The second room the Lord wants you to open for Him is that the room for service. Uh, if, if you picture, uh, uh, parang iko compare natin. Uh, if you compare the, if you compare your heart as a house, so there is a main door. You open already for the Lord Jesus Christ, and two other two other more doors He wants to open. The uh, the one door is the room for service. And if you picturize that one, what room that one? What we call that room? The living room. Huh? Living room. Not living room. Which room? Okay? Which room? Which room? The which room? Yung katulong ba? Mayanong tayo eh, di ba? If you are a child of God, you are what? Rich! Correct? Correct? Amen. So, we have a which room? Servants. We are rich. We are a child of God. The room for service. If you enter in the which room, what you will see? What you will see? Very simple, small room, but clean room, organized room, and you can appreciate it. Correct? Meron pa namang katulong na nagkakatulong siya na hindi niya maayos yung loob niya. What I'm trying to put in this out is this. In Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 2, uh, we read this one. I, I, I will try to point out this one. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Verse 1. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, what is the next sentence? Which is your reasonable service. So meaning, our reasonable service to God is that we have to present first our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Meaning, first, in order to do actual service to God, you have to be a clean vessel first. Because in 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 20-21, we, we can we read that one? 2 Timothy? 2 Timothy 20-21 But in a great house, there is not only vessels of gold and of silver, but also of wood and of earth, in some to honor, in some to dishonor. 21 If a man therefore purge himself from this, he shall be a vessel unto honor. Sanctified. What is the next sentence? In meat for the master's use and prepared unto every good work. So meaning, if you first, uh, first in order to do actual service to God, you have to be a clean person. Our testimony is very important 
when we are doing service to the Lord. In 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Therefore, if, the, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. How can a cleaner clean if she is not a clean? If she is not clean or don't know how to clean? You you get that uh, statement? How can a cleaner cleaner part clean if she is not clean or don't know how to clean? Correct. One of the classic illustration in that, in this account is the Good Samaritan in Luke chapter 10 verse 30 to 37. What is the recommendation of the Lord of the Lord in verse 37 there? Shall we read that one? Luke chapter 10 uh, chapter 10 verse 30 to 37. As, as what I promised to you, I will not stay long with the self, with the okay? If you read this one, uh, three, uh, one is, one is the, uh, shall we read? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him up there. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way, and when he saw him, he passed on the other side. And he was on. He go on the other side. He didn't kill this uh, one guy who is uh, uh, or kidnap or uh, whatever and likewise a Levite when he was at the place came and looked at him and passed by on the other side he go on the other side also he didn't help but a certain Samaritan as he got journeyed as he journeyed came where he was and when he saw him he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring in oil and wine set him on his own breast and brought him to an inn and took care of him. And on the morrow when he departed, he took up two pence and gave them to the horse and said unto him, Take care of him and whatsoever that is finished more, when I come again, I will repeat it. Which now of these three thinkest thou was never unto him that fell among the things? And he said, He that showed mercy on him, then said, Jesus unto him, Go and do thou likewise uh, what I'm trying to point out is, is about the service and we take this as illustration the good Samaritan the good Samaritan what the good Samaritan do he do what help to the needy uh, for uh, one uh, statement and what is the recommendation of the Lord Jesus Christ go and do down likewise he is speaking all of us here. What the Samaritan, uh, what is the Samaritan do this man? He help him, he give him. That what we have to do also to others in time of need. As an, applica uh, an application, we have to do service to others as what the Lord Jesus gave as example. But first, we have to, to be a clean vessel first for the glory of God. We can read that one in Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Uh, for the glory of God. Matthew chapter 5, verse 13 to 16. Ye are of the salt of the earth, but if the salt have lost its savor, wherewith salt shall be salted, it is hid for good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden under the foot of men. Ye are the light of, a, of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do it light a candle and put in under bushel on a candlestick and give it light unto all that is out. 16. This, uh, notice this one. Let your, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Why we are doing good works? Why we are do helping this one? To glorify our Lord Amen. in heaven. Amen. And He is the one who will repay us. Not we are asking for, for uh, we are asking for this, what we are in. We have to share the gospel to unbelievers. We have to help others who are in need. We have to support also the servants of God as what uh, the Friday school uh, teaching us, the, uh, our pastor. We are doing this service in love, even though we we speak nothing in return. Again, we are doing service 
We are doing the service in love, even though we speak nothing in return. Now, that decision also is yours if you want to open your heart for service for the Lord. Number three and last. This is the, uh, the room for salvation. First one is the room for salvation, which is the main door of our heart. Second thing is the room for service, the midst room of our heart. The last one is the room for submission. The room for submission. Submission. Or submit. The room for submission. Now, if you picturize again your heart as a house, uh, the first, the, uh, the one is which room, and what is this one? The room for submission. Which room is this? Master's bedroom. Huh? Master's bedroom. The our master's bedroom. So we have which room? We have master's bedroom also. If you enter in the master's bedroom, what we can see? This is what? Big room. This is big bed or sleeping nice cabinet nice toilet with a bathtub almost everything is there also in that room maybe the septic bowl is there for your money septic bowl uh, septic bowl for your money huh? septic bowl so oh, sorry <laughs> Take a minute. <laughs> no, I, I'm working in. Uh, I, I'm working in. Uh, I'm working as a mechanical, okay? and we are doing this drainage line. In the drainage line, all the toilet is going to the septic tank. <laughs> so I make it a septic bowl. <laughs> Se septic bowl. Brother Stanley knows this one. He's working also for that one. Even he's going for that septic tank. <laughs> you know Brother Stanley? Can you stand up? And George. Yeah. They are my workers. Amen. Ah, sorry. Uh, Co-workers. Uh, septic board. For important documents and also your money. We can see the luxury, entertainment, or convenience of the room. It is like a comfort zone that even we don't want to go outside in that room. Which sometimes resulting to very difficult for us to open this door in our heart for the Lord. Nasa comfort zone na tayo eh. Parang ayaw na natin what? Ibigay sa Panginoon. I or i-open sa Panginoon. I will not explain this point in details, but rather, I have to mention some list of the will of the Lord, and I will let you check or make a checklist and evaluate with yourself if you are submissive, because we are talking about submission, room for submission, to the general will of God. You have a check, uh, I will mention here, and you check yourself or evaluate yourself if this one is you are submissive to this. Is it the will of God that you will be saved? Yes. Why, why sometimes you are not submitting to the word of God with regards to salvation? Still you are insisting something. Still you are insisting good works to, in order to be saved. Still you are insisting something to, in order to be saved. How about baptism? How about bapti uh, baptism? Baptized. It is the will of God to be baptized after uh, you say yes. Why some? Uh, why still some uh, brethren here still not baptized? And I'm not talking about infant baptism. If you are already saying and not baptized. Why not to submit to the first to the first step of obedience? Amen. 
if you are uh, saved, if you are really saved, and one hundred percent in your heart, in your uh, that you know that you are already saved, why uh, why you are not uh, uh, submitting to the first step of uh, obedience? That is baptism. I'm not talking about the infant baptism. <coughs> Uh, how about uh, praying and reading the Bible? It is the will of God to pray and uh, read our Bible? Yes, but sometimes why we are not reading this? Why we are not submitting to the will, of, to the general will of God? How about attending our church services, Bible studies and church activities? Why we are not uh, submitting uh, uh, to the Word of God in Hebrews 10.25? Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another as he did at the approaching. Amen. And <clears throat> how about our giving our tithes and offering? Are we submissive to this? That we are giving our tithes and offering? How about to support the missionaries? It is the general will of God. Why sometimes we are not submitting to this? Why we are not uh, supporting our missionaries? How about our pastor? Support, help, and pray for our pastor, including his family. It is this the general will of God? Yes. We have to support our pastor. And to do good works as an example to the others for the glory of God? It is the will of God to do good works to others. Amen. Amen. And to forgive others if they wrong to you. Yeah, it is the will of God to forgive others if they something uh, do wrong for you. Yes. If they try to answer in yourself. I'm telling this one. And try to answer. And try to evaluate. Are you submissive? To the, to the general will of God that I'm uh, uh, mentioning. To forgive others if they to you, but rather help others in time of need. You are helping others in time of need. Is this the will of God? Are we submissive to this general will of God? Evaluate yourselves and you will be the, be the one to answer this will of God. In Acts chapter 9, verse 16 to 15, uh, as an illustration, uh, before we uh, finish our... First, uh, if you read in Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 16, because uh, we are uh, 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 talking, uh, talking about the room for submission. In Acts chapter 9, verse 1 to 6 and 15, this is the accounts when uh, uh, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, met uh, Saul, or and then later uh, became Paul. Saul has the will to, is, to slaughter the believers. If you read in uh, ver, uh, verse 1, 2, and 3. But when Jesus made Saul, and let, later became Paul on uh, his name, on, on his way to the road of Damascus, in Acts chapter 9, verse 4 to 6. Uh, can we read that one for a moment? Acts. Acts chapter 9. Okay. Okay. Uh, the first uh, three verses. Uh, the, when Saul uh, had uh, this one, uh, asked for uh, permission to the in Damascus to uh, slaughter or persecute, persecute the believers. This and, and as he journeyed, he came near Damascus, and suddenly there shined round about him a light from heaven. Verse 4. And he fell, and he fell on the, to the earth, and heard a voice saying unto him, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? This is the word of the Lord Jesus Christ. And he said, Who art thou, Lord? And the Lord said, I am Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the prince. And verse 6. Notice this one. Notice this one. And he in trembling and astonished said, Lord, 
what will thou have me to do? This is what we have to do. Is there is this your prayer also for the Lord today? A complete submission in his trusting to the Lord. You know the result when Paul, Paul submit to the will of God. God used him mightily in his work. And many, many people say it. For application, submission to God's will in the right relationship with God always begins with humility. Because we are talking about submission, always begins with humility. Not arrogance or high-minded. God expects us to walk humbly with Him and submission to Him. But this task is hard to us sometimes, in reality, because we are proud. Remember, anything that God commanded us to do, remember, anything that God commanded us to do and we are not doing is an act of rebellion or proud in our heart. Because it's mentioned there in James, in James, Therefore, to him that know it to do good, and do it it not, to him it is sin. In conclusion, the Lord is asking and knocking at the door of your heart today regarding your salvation, your service, and submission to him. Are you willing to open and fully trust it for him to come in the room of your heart, to control it, to suffer with him, and be with him? Again, I repeat, without God, we can do nothing. So you bow our heads, please. And we have bowed and very close to looking around.